Welcome everybody. Uh, good evening. And I just like to start by greeting everybody, all the um, parents and the students who have joined us for our virtual Welcome to High School tonight here at Canterbury High School. Uh, my name is Jane Alexander, and I'm the very proud principal of Canterbury High School. And I'm joined here this evening by our head of guidance, Tula Marcus, who's going to be um, presenting with me. Um, this is our first virtual um, Welcome to High School evening. Um, usually, uh, we would be hosting them here in the school. Um, so we want to thank you for uh, hosting us in your homes and in your spaces. Um, we would have uh, invited you physically into the school and you would have been able to uh, experience the exuberance and the students and the spaces, physical spaces and the staff. Um, and we hope to replicate that to a degree today. But what we want you to know is that when you arrive here in September, that all of, all of that will be in place. So you'll have a chance then to um, meet the other people in the school and the staff and, and see the physical spaces, but we will try to recreate that for you. Um, I'm just going to start presenting my screen here. Or, or, um, there we go. So um, a couple of things before we jump into our formal presentation. This is being recorded and so uh, it will actually be put on our website uh, so that if you want to come back and look at it or there's information that you um, need to double check or questions that you have that uh, you didn't answer the first time or people that you want to recommend have a look at our video um, it will be there and the second is that i know many of you have been able to ask us questions in our questionnaire and we've tried to work as many responses into our presentation today as possible if there is a question that's specific to you or your student and you don't feel uh, as though it was answered then please we're going to uh, feel free to reach out to us we're going to share our contact information at the end presentation, but we can, we're very happy to have individual conversations um, as need be. So um, as we do each morning, when we are here learning together and physically, um, we, um, as part of our opening day exercises, we participate together in the land acknowledgement to um, recognize and give thanks. So I'd like to start our session this evening by acknowledging that our learning is taking place on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. And we thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us and recognize their enduring presence on this land. So the first few slides um, that we're going to go through with you um, outline the commitments not only of Canterbury, but also of the Ottawa or, or Province District of New York. And uh, the first one is a message from our director. And uh, there is a video which is available. There is, there is a video that is available. Uh, I'm not going to play it now, but I am going to encourage you to view it at a time it is convenient for you. It, it really outlines the very important foundations upon which we do our work here at Canterbury and in the district. Um, and I think the core of the message that the director gives resonates in the, in the words that are on the screen before us, which is that our high schools, including Canterbury, are a place where students can come to school, be who they are, and discover who they can become. So at Canterbury, we strive for all of our students to experience uh, a deeply personalized connection to their learning and that one that honors and recognizes all facets of their identity and their lived experience. Uh, they see that reflected in their learning here at the school. So really, the, the first uh, bullet, or sorry, the first uh, line in the title here is, is, is very important. Students are why we are here. It is important that we have a place for every student. And the OCDSB has created an Indigenous um, Equity and Human Rights Roadmap. Uh, that students and families and community partners within the OCDSB have collaborated on to create this roadmap. And its purpose is to address systemic inequalities and foster a different culture of equity for us. Um, our district and our school are committed to a place for every student. And as I said, I couldn't agree more with the, the words on the screen that students are why we are here. So a component of our commitment to equity uh, is around Indigenous education. So it is important that we ensure Indigenous students have support, opportunities and resources to achieve academic success and personal well-being. And it's also important to uh, the educational outcomes for all of our students to have a fulsome understanding of Indigenous histories, traditions and contemporary realities. Uh, the last part of the slide talks about the support system that's in place across the district to support our Indigenous students. And we do have a student support coordinator that works here at the school with uh, students to support them. Again, continuing our commitment to equity, another component of the school and 
the strict commitment is to, to support Black minoritized and 2SLGBTQ plus students. Uh, there are many opportunities in the district for students uh, and opportunities that are listed on, on the screen. Um, at Canterbury High School, we support uh, many students who participate in and lead our Black Youth Forum, and there are many clubs um, and opportunities that students have um, to, uh, to pursue. Um, we work very hard as well to ensure that our curriculum materials and our learning spaces um, are represented as culturally relevant and responsive. Yet another facet of commitment to equity is supporting our students who are English language learners. So the district has a, uh, a support structure for English as a second language. At Canterbury, our students have the support of an English language learning coach who works collaboratively with our staff to support English language learners in their classes. And of course, our commitment to equity um, extends to students with special education needs. We're going to give you some more specific information about how we support at Canterbury students um, with IEPs and with special education needs. So we'll um, speak to that again further on in the slide presentation. So really this does sum up that our, our goal here is learning for every child. We want all students to be successful and that there are many pathways to success. And we'll talk about some of those this evening and that all pathways have value for our students here at Canterbury. And again, it's about learning for every child. I mentioned personalization learning, very, very important. Um, we maintain high expectations for all of our students and we work very hard to support them and personalize for them. So the next um, slides are specific to Canterbury. And I wanted to start with this, um, which is our leadership structure here at the school. We have a wonderful staff here very dedicated, very knowledgeable and experienced. Um, I introduced myself, we have two vice principals. Uh, they are, they support students by alpha and last name, but we all do work together as a team. We have guidance counselors who support their students and you can see on the screen, again, they support by alpha. Our arts Canterbury coordinator is Diane Gillis and I'll have her contact information available for those who need it um, later on in the slide deck. And we also are very fortunate to be supported by many department heads. They're listed on the screen. They all are curriculum experts in the areas that, uh, that are indicated, and uh, they are all here to support our students. So we're very fortunate. We have a wonderful structure of staff here at the school. Um, just the last part I'll mention, and then I'm going to turn it over to Tula, is we do have some specialized programs here at Canterbury, and uh, we have two system program classes, and um, admission to those um, classes is coordinated through learning support services at the district. That is our physical support program and our behavioral, behavioral intervention program. And we also have uh, an arts Canterbury program. We host the physical art, art program. So I'm sure there are a number of you here who have uh, who have an interest in that program, which is by application and audition. And we have arts, uh, arts areas listed there as well. So we'll be speaking to these uh, as well as all the other programs that we have. So I'm going to turn it over to Tula now and uh, let her walk you through the next part of the presentation. All right, good evening, everyone. So I'm going to start by taking you through uh, some of the high school diploma requirements and talk a lot about the pathways that are available to students um, in their high school years. So we'll start by uh, looking at the three different credentials that students can be working towards uh, in an Ontario high school. So we have the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and we have the Ontario Secondary School Certificate and the Certificate of Accomplishment. We're gonna spend most time talking about the Ontario Secondary School Diploma as in our school, the majority of students will be working towards this credential. So to begin, there are three components for the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. First one would be the number of credits required uh, for graduation, and that is a total of 30 credits. Uh, in elementary, it's different. Students will learn different subjects. Once you transition to high school, each subject you take is a class worth a credit, or in some cases, a half credit. And so uh, these credits will be in a variety of subject areas. 18 of those 30 credits will be compulsory credits, meaning that you have to take credits in those specific subjects as determined by the Ministry of Education. So an example would be uh, four credits in English, one per grade, 
Uh, you will have a total of 15 of those compulsory credits that are very specific. So you'll need to take some math courses, science, Canadian history, Canadian geography, a credit in the arts, health and physical education, French as a second language, and uh, half credit in each of career studies and civics. In addition, there are three more compulsory credits with a little bit of choice. So each group is around a kind of a type of area or subject area. So the group one being around languages and social science focused, group two being arts, business and phys ed focused and group three, an extra science or a technology or computers course. And students would have some choice within each group to select one credit to fulfill that requirement. And for all groups, French as a second language, as well as cooperative education can be used to fulfill each of those groups as well. On top of those 18 compulsory credits, students will need to uh, complete 12 more elective credits. And these are completely student choice. They're courses that those students would be interested in, where their strengths are, and that would help them to pursue a specific pathway after high school. So there's a lot of flexibility within those optional credits. Two other additional requirements for graduation include the 40 hours of community involvement, as well as the provincial literacy requirement. So the 40 hours of community involvement, students can start to complete uh, the summer before they start grade nine. So this summer, um, once they've completed grade eight, they can engage in some community service uh, virtually or in person. And once they arrive to us in grade nine, can bring their paperwork to us and start to track some of those hours uh, for this requirement. The provincial literacy requirement is typically completed by students uh, during their grade 10 year in the spring. Uh, they will write the literacy test um, by, the, uh, by EQAO as determined by the Ministry of Education. So this is not something for them to worry about right now or for you to be concerned about. They will be well prepared, uh, but we wanted you to be aware that this is a requirement they will have to fulfill. So now it's important to talk about the learning pathways available in high school. Pathways include locally developed and essential courses, academic and university courses, applied and college courses. Uh, locally developed courses are gonna help develop those foundational skills in literacy and numeracy. Academic courses are more theoretical and prepare for uh, university studies in that particular subject area. And uh, applied courses uh, provide uh, more hands-on and practical approaches and preparation for college level programs in that particular subject area. What is important to note is that students can be taking different subjects in different pathways. And so there is a wide variety of options to help students towards their pathway to graduation. The one thing that is new coming this September, you may be aware that the Ministry of Education has announced that the provincial government will be de-streaming grade nine mathematics. So starting in the fall of 2021, so this coming September, the math curriculum will be offered not at the applied or academic level, but as one course and students will be prepared and develop the skills and knowledge to pursue either pathway in grade 10, either the academic or applied pathway. As part of high school, students will have many opportunities to engage in experiential learning, and we cannot stress how important it is for students to connect with the community and with community partners and gain learning experiences that go beyond the classroom as well. There are opportunities for students through uh, field trips, guest speakers, lots of activities happening in our classrooms, and also through credit, uh, credit granting opportunities such as cooperative education. These opportunities allow students to learn more about the real world, the opportunities that exist, what opportunities are available to them through different pathways. Uh, they make connections with the subjects they're studying and it helps them to make decisions about their learning and their future. Some of these experiential learning opportunities uh, involve specific programs. The vast majority of these programs here uh, really are tailored to students later on in high school. We know that grade nine and 10 are very foundational years uh, where we expose students to a variety of different subject areas to help them determine and, and start to tailor their education as they continue through to their later years of high school. I will speak to a few of them just to, to kind of get you thinking about those, some of those opportunities that exist. So the first I'll, I will speak about is co-op. And co-op is for students who are entering uh, grade 11. Generally, they have to be at least 16 years of age. And it's an opportunity for them to gain work experience, to make connections with what they're learning in their classes within the school, to network, build uh, connections in the industry, and to test drive a career. And so these uh, opportunities can be in a variety of different areas. 
We have students that have done co-op placements in businesses, small businesses, small businesses, larger businesses, construction, culinary, um, medical offices, law offices, a variety of different experiences. It can help them to decide if they want to pursue that particular pathway. It can also teach them that maybe that isn't a particular pathway that they want to continue in and help them to make different decisions or pursue something else. Co-op is also connected to the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, which is also listed as one of these programming options. So in through OYAP and through uh, placement in a relevant co-op, students can start working towards an apprenticeship in a, at one of many skilled trades. So we have the sectors of construction, we've got examples of electrician, hairstylists, early childhood educators, bakers, chefs, et cetera. So all of these trades individuals or these trades careers can, be, can begin in high school. Students can earn credits towards their high school graduation diploma, as well as be uh, receiving some of the training required and the working hours required for an apprenticeship. We have other opportunities here listed as well, dual credits, e-learning, specialist high skills majors, which I'll speak to uh, as we house a specialist program in our school. And so we just encourage uh, students to and parents to look into different opportunities to speak with guidance counselors and ask questions and we look forward to exploring a variety of different options with your students. Continuing education through the OCDSB also offers a number of opportunities for students outside of the regular school day. I think the most common uh, uh, programs that are um, accessed by our grade nine students would be summer school, either preparation for uh, grade nine or taking a grade nine course early the summer before starting a high school. There are literacy and numeracy programs. Uh, you may be familiar with some of the homework clubs available in some of our schools and students can attend these after school for extra homework help. And a lot of our students are also accessing the international language credit program at secondary. Um, so Saturday school, students can register to take a course uh, in a classic or international language and there, and there are many choices. So all of these programs are again, just opportunities to help diversify your child's experience in high school. So now we'll speak a little bit about course selection. The process is not quite begun yet. So uh, no need to, to panic. Uh, this is a time of year where we're starting these conversations. High school is all about discovering who you are, looking at learning what opportunities there are, determining plans and goals on how to reach those goals. And it's really important for students uh, to engage in a lot of conversations, talk with parents and guardians, friends, other adults that they know in their lives that have different career paths, uh, to speak with their teachers and to, to get advice in terms of what particular pathway might be a good place for them to start. It's important for them to be reflecting on what their goals are, what their hopes are, their dreams, their strengths, their learning styles, thinking about the types of careers, where, what kind of environment they want to work in, and then explore opportunities to find their pathway. And as a guidance counselor, I spent a lot of my time supporting students in this, in this endeavor, so, and uh, we are um, here to help answer any questions students may have. One resource that we use to help support students with course selection and career exploration is Zello. Uh, students may be familiar with a different program previously, but our school board has uh, begun to use this great um, online platform. It allows students to do some research. It allows them to do some reflection, to complete some quizzes and lessons and planning activities to help them look at all the different information, all the different options that are available to them and that are related to career pathways. Ways. Uh, the elementary school teachers and ISSTs have started introducing students to Zello, so they may be a little bit familiar with the program already. Uh, and it is on this program that we're going to be doing course selection when that becomes available. So we will be connecting with our feeder schools and being able to help them uh, help students complete their course selection. And we will be available as guidance team to answer questions that students or parents may have about picking those courses for grade nine. So in terms of if we look at the pathways uh, to graduation, you can see that there are so many opportunities. It's high school is a really exciting time. Uh, and each pathway is going to be unique for every student. Uh, students' goals and needs um, will determine what pathway they will take. And so we really want to stress that they are in the driver's seat and that there are lots of supports available to help them explore the many possibilities available to them. So now let's get into the specifics about grade nine. 
So courses for grade nine, students will take eight credits in their grade nine year. They will be required to take courses uh, that are listed as compulsory. So English, math, science, geography, French, and phys ed are required courses for grade nine. There will be some choice within each of these in terms of the type of course that students will select. So for English, math, uh, science, geography, and French, uh, there are different options in terms of the type. So applied academic, um, French immersion options, locally developed, and then options in phys ed as well. With respect to art electives, uh, students will have choice. Uh, we offer four different arts uh, for students coming into grade nine. So for dance, this is a course in which students will explore different forms of dance, which could include modern, jazz, ballet, hip hop, contemporary, Broadway, Broadway and world dance. And there is no uh, training that is required to enroll. So these are, this is an introductory course um, just an open mind and some enthusiasm for moving. So uh, this is, is a really great option. Drama is also, uh, these are all open uh, courses. They are all introductory courses. And so students do not need to have prior experience in drama or music or visual arts to take these courses. They're great introduction. In drama, you'll learn to create, perform, discuss, analyze dra drama, develop public speaking, communication skills, in music, uh, it's instrumental music and it's an introductory course again. So learning some theory, learning some creation and learning to play an instrument. And for visual arts, uh, drawing and painting and a variety of other different art forms will be explored. For our group one, two or three elective, students will have a choice between Spanish, business, which focuses on information technology. So you'll learn things like how to use spreadsheets, create presentations, uh, other skills that will be helpful in other courses as well. And then our tech design course is a combination of learning to draft and draw plans and also getting to use the tools in our wood, uh, wood shop uh, to build and create. So lots of really great options for students in their grade nine year. So I wanted to quickly review the course types again. Um, so academic, we're thinking, I think you have to look at it in terms of more of a theoretical approach. Our applied courses are more hands-on and practical. Um, and for those courses, you'll have choices for English, science, geography, and French, and uh, it, for both of them. For de-streamed courses, uh, for the de-streamed courses specifically in math for this year, Locally developed is an option in English, math, and science. And then our open courses, which are not specific to a particular destination, are those hands-on elective courses like phys ed, arts, business, and tech. We wanted to highlight for you uh, the post-secondary destination and where the different course types lead. And there are a lot of arrows on this slide, and that's intentional because the pathway is not necessarily linear for, for all students. And there is the ability to move between pathways. So you might start an academic, you may move to college courses, and you may end up in an apprenticeship or in a college or going to the world of work, or you may continue through uh, to a university pathway. So please, uh, we encourage you to look very closely at the skills and strengths and interests to select courses when you're at that point um, that will start with where you are or where your child is so that they will be very successful and build those skills. And then with the support of a guidance counselor, you can talk about different pathways to pursue whichever one of these four wonderful pathways that uh, destinations that exist. So to look at the high school pathway plan, we uh, have students take eight courses in grade nine, 10 uh, and 11. And that leaves us with only needing to take six courses in a grade 12 year. You will notice as you go through each year, there are more electives available. So those foundational grade nine and 10 years where you get a lot of exposure to a variety of different subject areas. And then you get to tailor the second half of your high school career toward a particular pathway that you may be considering and would take courses to help you get there. For students in the French immersion uh, pathway, we have highlighted here the courses that students would take in order to pursue the French immersion certificate. So these are the 10 courses that students would take in addition to their, their other requirements. So French immersion language course in grade nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then a few courses, science and geography in grade nine, as well as a few other courses in grade 10 and 11 in order to complete those 10 required courses for the French immersion certificate. certificate. So with that, the French opportunities we have, we offer a full pathway of core French uh, courses from grade nine to grade 12. 
So for students in core French who want to continue studying in French, we encourage you to consider doing that. Uh, for French immersion, we have two certificates that students can pursue, and they are differentiated by the number of courses that students take in French. Both require you to take French language, French immersion, grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then if you take at least six courses in French, you would end up with 10 French immersion credits and earn that certificate. Or if you uh, wanted to choose some of the courses that are offered in French, but to take those in English, you, if you have a minimum of three additional courses, that will give you a total of seven, and that would be for the extended French certificate. Regardless, if you are in the core French pathway or the French immersion pathway, students that take grade 12 French will have an opportunity to challenge the DELF, which is an internationally recognized diploma of French language proficiency. And so this is a really good tangible way to validate the years that you've spent learning French. It is something you can add to your resume. It's something you can use when you're applying to jobs because it gives uh, a good indication of how your level of bilingualism in reading, writing, and oral communication. So let's look at a typical timetable. Uh, this isn't a typical year. Uh, so this isn't the schedule we're following this year, but on a regular school year, we run a, uh, in a semester system. So we have two semesters. Semester one runs from September to January. Semester two runs from February to June. And students will have four classes each semester. On the right of the slide, you will see a sample timetable. And this is for one semester or the first semester of grade nine. The student has French and math and phys ed and art. And each of those classes will be approximately 70 or exactly 75 minutes. <laughs> and uh, you'll have two classes in the morning, a five minute break in between. Then you'll have lunch for about 65 minutes. And then the afternoon, you'll have two classes again with a five minute break in between. You run on a day one and day two schedule. And so that just means that there's a little bit of rotation between your morning classes and your afternoon classes. They will flip flop depending on the day. But rest assured, we will get you accustomed to the schedule and we'll show you where your classes are and you'll fall into the routine of the high school timetable. In conversations we've had with uh, many of our feeder schools as we visited them the last couple of weeks, it, the question always comes up about recess. There is no recess in high school. Uh, you do have the five minute breaks to get from class to class and a long lunch to be able to have lunch, but also to engage in a variety of activities that are happening around the school. So let's uh, kind of talk about some of the supports and resources that are available to help students uh, throughout their four years of high school. So we have guidance counselors like myself. We provide academic and pathway planning and support around well-being. And we work with a group of students uh, assigned by, the, by Alpha. So the first letter of their last name will determine which guidance counselor will be theirs for, for the year. We also have special education supports. So our learning support teachers coordinate the IEP accommodations and work with students and families to develop IEPs and documentation. They work with students and staff to support student learning. And we also have a wonderful team of educational assistants that work together with our learning support teachers and with our classroom teachers and students to ensure that students have the supports that they need. We also have our student success teachers who are an additional resource. They provide support with organization, time management, study skills. Um, they always have school supplies and snacks available if students need anything. Uh, Recently, they've been running Google Classrooms for online academic support as well, and our special education team has been doing the same. And through student success, uh, they can provide support to students who are falling behind in courses. Uh, if at the end uh, they need to complete some assignments, a student success teacher will work with them to ensure that they are successful or to help them become successful in those courses. And uh, so there's lots of support at Canterbury. In addition, we have supports within the school um, that we can access by referral through the guidance team. We have wonderful professional supports that work with us. Sometimes it's an, uh, a consultative uh, approach that they're using. Sometimes they're working directly with students. So we do have a school psychologist, a social worker, uh, an itinerant educational assistant uh, who mentors students within the school. Uh, we have an indig Indigenous support coordinator, um, as Ms. Alexander indicated earlier, and youth counselors from a couple of partner agencies, so Rita Wood Addiction Services, as well as Robert Smart uh, Youth Center. So there's lots of different supports that we can access to help support the health, mental health and well-being of our students. So I wanted to talk a little bit about student life at Canterbury and what you know. 
What I can say is that we have a school that is very creative, very welcoming, accepting. Uh, there's a diverse student body. There's always a lot of energy in the halls of our school. Um, we have very, some interesting programs that we offer, including the International Certificate Program for students who want to um, increase their global awareness through taking language courses, international focus courses in grade 11 and 12, as well as engaging in intercultural, intercultural experiences, whether those are abroad or at school uh, through clubs and activities. We have a specialist high skills major program in business. This is a program that students can apply to once they are uh, entering uh, grade 11 and grade 12. This is a specific program. Uh, it focuses on all facets of the business world. Students gain different experiences through co-op, through various certifications. They go on a lot of experiential learning activities, including field trips to local businesses. They've done trips to Toronto and uh, to learn about the stock market and participate in business competitions. So this is a program that students can be looking towards uh, for the grade 11 year. And in addition, there are specialist high skills major programs in a variety of other areas that you can access by applying to other schools um, in a variety of different fields. At Canterbury, we have a lot of activity, lots of things going on during the school day, um, including athletics, uh, clubs, a focus on health and wellness. So there's lots to get involved in. We have a number of team sports and individual sports in a typical year where students can participate. So um, anything from basketball to field hockey to wrestling, cross country. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, activities that are organized by our Canterbury Athletic Association. So intramural lunchtime activities. And I know that through COVID times, uh, our CAA has also been encouraging fitness challenges and creating opportunities for students to stay engaged as well um, and to stay healthy. And we also have Bain's Gym, which is a weights and cardio room and named after a former um, guidance counselor and head of his editor school. So lots of ways to get involved athletically. In terms of clubs and activities, tons. This is just, this is not an exhaustive list but students can get involved in a variety of different ways. There are virtual activities happening this year um, through some of the clubs to continue the connections, but lots of ways to get involved. Um, so we encourage students and we know that this is a huge part of high school experiences to get involved as much as possible. So lots to do. Our halls are, we would love to take you through them and be able to walk the building. But um, for those of you who've had an opportunity previously to visit the school, our halls are full of creativity. There are, are there's artwork everywhere um, that's student created work, uh, lots of opportunity for students to express themselves. We have uh, a lot of diverse perspectives that are represented, resources, books, um, opportunities for students to develop their creativity as well through a variety of different arts courses. Uh, we have our woodshop, communications, uh, technology, and Radio Free Canterbury Studios. So we've got some great facilities for students to develop their technical side. Um, and as discussed already, our business program has lots of great opportunities for students to engage with the community and develop their business skills as well. And we are an artistic community. We've got arts and culture. Uh, we've got opportunities for students in all areas, music, dance, theater. We do school productions and musicals that are open to the whole school body. So we encourage students to get involved and try new activities. And this last slide is uh, just a hello from our CHS link crew. Uh, they took this photo today because uh, they would have loved to be here to show you around the building themselves. Our link crew are leaders. They're in grade 11 and 12 and they have taken on the role of being mentors to our grade nine students and will help with the transition to high school. They will be part of the organization of our welcome to high school in the fall and are there to support students throughout the school year. And so they just wanted to have their faces on the screen to say hello and they will be here to receive the students that come to us in the fall. So thank you. Okay, so thank you so much.
Tula. Um, we got some feedback through the questionnaire that it was difficult to hear me in the opening. So I'm just going to plug in with hope this resolves it. And my apologies. My apologies if you weren't able to hear me well um, in the opening comments. Um, so several of the questionnaire questions were around the registration process. And so I wanted to take a few minutes and walk you through that uh, here. So um, there are a number of different uh, pieces to cover. So if you are a student who is currently uh, attending an OCDSB school and you reside in our school zone, um, and, and if you need to determine whether that is in fact the case, you can go on the OCDSB website and there's an app or something there called the school locator. And you can type in your address and it will verify what is your designated school zone. So for our feeder schools, and I, I apologize if I miss any in this list, but if you go to Roberta Bondar or Hawthorne or Featherston or Vincent Massey, or if you're at OCV um, Southeast, um, as Tula said that you've, you've already probably had a visit and um, we're, we're um, already had some conversations and we will coordinate your course selection with you there. So that's for students who are currently attending an OCDSB school. If you are, if you are living in our school zone um, and you are not currently attending an OCDSB school, I'm going to walk you through the process in the next slide because there'll be some documentation and some things that will, some information that we'll need from you. And then for students who have applied and are waiting for admission decisions for Arts Canterbury, um, we know that um, there will be more information shared at the time of the acceptance to the program. And it's important that students should be following the course selection process at their home school. So making sure that they're making course selections to their designated school and then um, pending uh, admission to Canterbury will work with them um, to complete the registration here. So as I said, if, you, um, if your student is currently uh, not with the OCDSB and you reside in our school zone, then the process is outlined on this slide. So we'd like you to email the school office at the email address that's shown. And we'd ask that you do that beginning tomorrow. Um, it's important for us to know who, who is coming to us so that we can prepare all of the different course options and opportunities that were described. Um, and we're gonna ask you for some documentation. So we will need um, digital or faxed copies of proof of age of the student, so birth certificate or passport, and then proof of address, which um, uh, there are two that are required, lease or ownership document for your home, and then a utility bill with the parent or guardian name so that we can process your, um, your registration. And once we receive that um, information, then a vice principal will follow up with you by phone to complete the registration. The other piece that I'd like to review is uh, that there is a cross-boundary transfer process. So if you um, are interested in having your student attend Canterbury, but you don't live in our uh, catchment area, there is a process that is the, the board has put in place and uh, an application needs to be made and they require the approval of the principal of the receiving school in consultation with the principal of the sending school. So a couple of things that's important to know, it, the, the student must be registered in their home OCDSB school to be eligible for consideration for a transfer. Then um, applications are submitted and there's an electronic uh, uh, form on the OCDSB website. They must be submitted and the transfer window is February 1st to the 16th. And I also direct you to, there's a student parent transfer guide that uh, is very important. It gives a lot of information regarding the cross-boundary transfer process, including the criteria. There are specific criteria that um, we can consider in whether or not a student is, um, receives a cross-boundary transfer. So I would direct you to that website um, that has an FAQ with lots of um, information, including the criteria. And the, the window is important. We need to receive those applications within the window of the 1st to the 16th. And again, your student must be registered in their home school. And I, again, there's the home, the, the locator on the website. If you're not sure, you can type in your address and it will uh, let you know what that home school is before we can consider them for a transfer. So with that, um, I think we've, we've, we've made an effort to answer most of the questions that are there. I'm sure there may be a few specific questions that, that we haven't answered. So, um, and I did say off the top, and you may not have heard me because of the audio, that please feel free to reach out if, uh, if you have additional questions or if your specific question wasn't answered. 
Um, we are available here at the school by phone and the main office phone number is listed um, and our email addresses are listed. So myself, uh, Scott Hubert Daly and Jessica Young, who are the vice principals. And uh, I'll also direct you to our Canterbury High School website. We do update it regularly and there is a lot of key information there um, that is good to know and uh, also share a lot, it shares a lot about student life here at the school. The other um, piece is for those of you who are, uh, have applied to Arts Canterbury, um, the specific information is available. There is an Arts Canterbury website as well. And the arts coordinator is Diane Gillis and I've included her information here. So if there are arts, arts Canterbury specific questions, Diane is the person that is best uh, positioned to answer those questions. Um, so with that, I just wanna leave a last message um, to the students who are watching. Um, I hope you're really excited. Uh, and looking forward to high school at, uh, positively. Uh, I know this year has been a very atypical year for everybody and we're all learning in very different ways, um, but I hope you're looking forward to new opportunities, uh, academic and extracurricular and new friendships and new possibilities. Um, as Tula mentioned, this is a very lively building and uh, it's a, it's, there are lots of things that you can do here um, and lots of things you can explore. And I want you to be able to look forward to, come, to coming here and being yourself and feeling a sense of connection to the school. Uh, there are many people here that want to support you and make sure that you're successful. Um, so I hope you're excited to, to, uh, to start high school. So with that, uh, and on behalf of the staff, um, we'll conclude tonight. I just want to thank you again for taking the time to spend with us uh, this evening and wish you all the best. So thank you and take care. <laughs>